Before we get started, I need to give a massive thank you to Linode for sponsoring this video. They make it easy and affordable to host your site or service in the cloud, offering no-nonsense hosting with plans starting at just $5. This means no surprise fees or overages like you might have gotten from some more entry-level hosting companies. Now, Linode also has a full API that works with tools like Terraform and Kubernetes, making it an awesome environment for development projects. Maybe you've used an entry-level hosting service before? Well, Linode is your step up to powerful, fast, and fully configurable cloud computing. Anyways go ahead and sign up with the link below and take advantage of a free $20 credit using the code TWT19. All right, so let's actually start coding and implementing this AI. Now, the first step and the first thing we always need to do whenever we use Neat is we need to load in the configuration file that we worked so hard on in the last video and you know, feed that um, and, and start working with it. So we'll we'll discuss that a little bit, but essentially what we're gonna do is create two functions now. We're gonna create one function called run. I'm just gonna pass in here for now. Uh, and actually not another function, sorry, but it, it kind of looks like a function. I'm gonna say if name underscore underscore name underscore underscore equals equals underscore underscore main underscore underscore. And now I'm actually just gonna do some weird kind of fancy things that Neat usually recommends to get the path to our configuration file which is something that we need. So I'm gonna say local underscore directory is equal to os dot path dot, I believe it's dir name, and then underscore underscore file underscore underscore. What this is gonna do is just give us the path to the directory that we're currently in because we need to use that to load in our configuration file. Now what I'm also gonna do is say config underscore path equals os dot path dot join. And now what I'm going to do is join the local directory to the name of my configuration file. So in this case, the name is config hyphen feed forward like that dot uh, txt. So this, all this is doing is just finding the exact um, absolute path to this file, which apparently we need. And then I'm going to call my run function. And I'm going to pass it the config path. Now inside of my run function now, I'm gonna take the config path as a parameter and I'm gonna load in the configuration file. So to do that, I need to have a look here. Actually, I'm just gonna copy something in because it's kind of long and I don't really feel like typing it. Um, this is what we need to type. So config, I'm gonna change this to config path, uh, but essentially what we need to do is say config equals neat dot config dot config we need to define all of the kind of subheadings we used in this so if you see here we have default genome we have default species default stagnation default reproduction and that's exactly what we define here we tell it kind of all the properties we're setting so neat default genome neat default reproduction default species default stagnation all of that and it assumes that we already have this here because this is actually required every time, like I said before. Um, so we don't need to put like neat.neat .neat here. Uh, but anyways, that's what it does. And then we set the path for configuration file and it looks at that configuration file, reads it in. Uh, and now we can actually use the configuration file when we start creating a population and doing all of that. So the next thing we need to do is create a population. So for our population, I'm gonna say P stands for population is gonna be neat.population. And we'll just simply put the config file here to generate a population based on whatever we had in this config file. Okay, next, we're gonna add what we call the stats reporters um, to our program here or to Neat. Now, what these do is just give us, they're optional, you don't have to add them, but they just give us some output. So whenever we're actually running the algorithm, rather than not seeing anything happen in the console, we'll see like some detailed statistics about each generation um, and about the best fitness and all of that. So to do this, what we're gonna say is p.add underscore reporter like that. And then inside here, we're gonna say neat.std out um, reporter like that and then here we're going to put true this just gives us some stats i'm not really going to discuss what that does now we're also going to say stats equals neat dot statistics reporter i think i spelled that correctly and we're going to say p dot add underscore reporter and then we're going to add stats like that i guess i could have just put this in here too but that's fine we'll do this um, statistics. Okay, awesome. So this is giving us the output. This is setting the population. And the last thing we need to do here now is actually say winner equals p dot run comma 50. And we're going to put a function here. Now, believe it or not, this is almost 
all we need to do to actually set up neat um, it's pretty minimal to do this but essentially what we're doing now is we've set a population we've loaded in the configuration file we've set the output that we're going to see and now what we need to do is set the fitness function that we're going to run this many generations so we see here obviously you know i put 50 that means that's how many generations we are going to run the fitness function that i put here now we need to talk about the fitness function what is the fitness function well the way that we determine our bird's fitness is by how far it moves in the game so it actually only makes sense that this main function here is going to be the fitness function for our algorithm or for our neat um yeah i guess our neat algorithm now we need to modify this actually quite a bit to work properly as a fitness function but all a, a fitness function does is set the fitness for our birds so what we're going to do is we're actually going to put main in here and what this is going to do is call the main function 50 times and pass it all of the genomes so like that population current generation population as well as the config file every time and then what we're going to do in here is kind of just generate a game based on all of the birds that were given or all of those genomes that were given uh, now i know this is kind of confusing but it'll start to make sense so i'm going to say genomes comma config as the parameters here which are required so whenever you create a fitness function for neat you need to make sure that you have genomes uh, and config as parameters and you can call this whatever you want some people typically call it like eval genomes or like fitness i'm just going to keep it as uh what, what do we have this main and now we need to start modifying this function to work properly for more than one bird because remember this fitness function is going to take all of our genomes and it needs to evaluate all of them now we could in theory um, run a game for one bird at a time so we could you know like for all these birds all we do is just make a for loop and just run one game for all those birds but that's not very efficient i would like to run all of the birds playing at the same time which means we need to make some modifications uh, so the first thing I'm going to do here is change this bird variable to say birds. And what I'm going to do now is start changing some of the things that we had here that were only for one bird to work with multiple birds, which is actually pretty easy to do. Uh, all I need to actually do to change this is go here inside of this pipes method. Uh, I still have to do it one more time, but I'm going to say for bird in birds and then just indent this collision here. Now, what I'm also going to do is just change where it says bird.x here to say birds0.x. Um, actually, no, let's not do that. Let's change it to bird x. Let's indent this, but let's take this pipe x here. Sorry, this is a little confusing now. Uh, and just move this out like that. Okay, awesome. So what I've done is just said for bird in birds. We're going to check if every pipe collides with every bird. We're also then going to check if the birds have passed by the pipe. If they have, we'll, we'll add this right here, um, and that should be good. Then we'll still do the same thing with removing the pipe, but we don't need to run that in the for loop for the birds because it's only for one pipe, and then same thing with moving the pipes. Okay, next thing we need to do here is do the same thing. So just add a for loop down here. So say for bird in birds, like that, and then this way we can check if each of our birds hits the ground which is what this does here and then we'll obviously add something to do with that later okay great so we've done that uh and i think that's almost all we need to do for that so now what i'm going to do is actually just set up some more things at the top of our function that we're going to need so i'm going to set up two more lists so i'm going to say nets equals blank and ge equals blank now what i need to do is i need to keep track of the neural network that controls each bird because these genomes when they come in are really just a bunch of neural networks that are going to control each of our birds i need to keep track of the bird that that neural network is controlling so where that position is in the screen and i need to keep track of our um, genomes so that i can actually change their fitness based on you know how far they move or if they hit a pipe or if they do all of this stuff so i'm going to use three lists to do this it's maybe not the most efficient way but should work fine so what i'm going to do now is say 4g in genomes and what i'm going to do is set up a neural network for that um, genome and i'm going to set up a bird object for it and then just keep track of that um, genome in a list and the reason i'm using three lists is so that each position in these lists uh, will correspond to the same bird so you know like position zero will have the neural network for bird zero uh, the genome for bird zero and the actual bird object that we've created for that bird so we can keep track of where it is so what i'm going to do is say 
um, net equals neat dot nn dot feed forward network and then I'm gonna pass G as well as um, config I believe I think that's right I need to check to make sure I didn't absolutely butcher that which I could have uh, no nope, I think I did that correctly okay awesome so now that we have that I'm gonna say nets dot append net I'm going to say birds dot append and I'm just going to create a standard bird object here that's going to start at the same position of all of our other bird objects. So I believe that was 230, 350. And now I'm going to append this genome into our GE list. So I'm going to say GE dot append G and make sure I did that correctly. And then the last thing I'm going to do is just set the initial fitness of our birds to be zero. So I'm going to say um, actually before I append that G dot fitness equals zero. I guess it doesn't matter where I do this, um, but that is kind of how this works. So what we're doing is, you know, setting up a neural network for our genome. That's how you do it. You say neat dot nn dot feed forward network, give it the genome, give it the config file. So it knows how to actually set it up properly, append it to the list. We're going to append a bird object to that list as well, which will, you know, be with this neural network. And then we're going to append the actual genome to the list as well in the same position of this bird object and this neural network so that we can keep track of, you know, its fitness and change its fitness as we desire. All right. So now that we have that, uh, there's a few more things we need to do in here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is start actually removing birds that um, collide or, you know, like die essentially. So what I need to check is, you know, if a bird collides with a pipe, I don't want to run it anymore. I want to get rid of it from here and whatever its fitness was at is what it will stay at. I don't want to add any more fitness to it. I don't want to keep it in this list. I just want to get rid of it. So that's how we'll do this. So what I'm going to do here is in pipe.collide, I just need to look at my other file to make sure I don't um, destroy this. I'm going to, um, uh, let's see how I want to do this. Okay. What I'm going to do is say, change instead of saying for bird in birds i'm actually going to say for x bird in enumerate bird just so this way i can actually get the position in the list of where this bird is as well and now i'm going to say gex dot fitness minus equals one that's the first thing i'm going to do and what this is actually going to do is every time a bird hits a pipe it's going to have one removed from its fitness score so that we don't favor birds that, you know, make it far, but just ram themselves into the pipe every time. We want to make sure that if a bird hits a pipe and another bird, you know, is at the same level, but didn't hit the pipe, um, they will have the one that didn't hit the pipe will have a higher fitness score so that we encourage it to go in between the pipe. So that's what I'm doing here saying GE uh, X dot fitness minus equals one. Now I'm going to say birds dot remove bird. Now this is just going to get rid of that bird object. So we're no longer actually moving it um, throughout the screen. All right. So I'm actually just gonna make a slight modification here to make sure that I don't mess anything up. So I realized I did this and I didn't even use this. So what I'm going to do is actually just remove um, the bird, the neural network associated with it, as well as that genome from the list so that we don't touch those anymore. So I'm going to say uh, birds dot pop. And then in this case, X that I'm also going to say, um, nets dot pop X because that'll be the neural network associated with that bird and I'll say GE dot pop X just to get rid of those so that those will remove those I'll actually return them here too but that doesn't matter we'll just remove those and now the next thing that I'm going to add here is inside of this add pipe where we increment the score I'm going to actually increase the fitness level of each of my birds uh, by a fair amount so if they actually get through the pipe I'm going to give them like in this case, an extra five fitness. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because I want to encourage the birds to go through the pipes rather than just, you know, making it further in the level, but ramming themselves into the pipe. Uh, so what I'm going to do is essentially say for, uh, I guess G E in G, uh, no, I guess it's for G in G E. I'm just going to increase their fitness. I'm going to say G dot fitness plus equals five. So any, and the reason I can do this without having to loop through the birds is because if, you know, we have to remove a bird, we're removing its genome as well from that list. So any genome that's actually in this list is still alive. And if it made it through the pipe, then it will gain five to its fitness score. Uh, so that should work properly. Now down here, I'm going to do the same thing. So if a bird hits the ground, rather than removing any fitness from it, I'm just going to remove, um, 
what do you call it that bird from the list so we'll do that same pop thing here so i'm going to instead of saying four uh you know bird i'm gonna say four x comma bird in enumerate birds then what we will do is simply pop that so to do that it's pretty easy birds dot pop x nets dot pop x and finally ge dot pop x to remove all of those now we might run into an issue here where since i'm removing a bird and we're looping through birds we have an issue but We'll, we'll we'll see as we get through here if that's a problem. Otherwise, I do know a way to fix that, um, but hopefully that'll work.